This is my simple religion. No need for temples. No need for complicated philosophy. Your own mind, your own heart is the temple. Your philosophy is simple kindness. Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. Our prime purpose in this life is to help others. And if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. The whole purpose of religion is to facilitate love and compassion, patience, tolerance, humility, and forgiveness. Only the development of compassion and understanding for others can bring us the tranquility and happiness we all seek. Compassion is the radicalism of our time. Compassion naturally creates a positive atmosphere, and as a result, you feel peaceful and content. Peace does not mean an absence of conflicts, differences will always be there. Peace means solving these differences through peaceful means, through dialogue, education, knowledge, and through humane ways. Love and compassion are the true religions to me. But to develop this, we do not need to believe in any religion. The topic of compassion is not at all religious business. It is important to know it is human business. It is a question of human survival. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. If a problem is fixable, if a situation is such that you can do something about it, then there is no need to worry. If it's not fixable, then there is no help in worrying. There is no benefit in worrying whatsoever. The more time you spend thinking about yourself, the more suffering you will experience. I believe all suffering is caused by ignorance. People inflict pain on others in the selfish pursuit of their happiness or satisfaction. Yet true happiness comes from a sense of inner peace and contentment, which in turn must be achieved through the cultivation of altruism, of love and compassion, and elimination of ignorance, selfishness, and greed. When we are motivated by compassion and wisdom, the results of our actions benefit everyone, not just our individual selves or some immediate convenience. When we are able to recognize and forgive ignorant actions of the past, we gain strength to constructively solve the problems of the present. I believe compassion to be one of the few things we can practice that will bring immediate and long-term happiness to our lives. I'm not talking about the short-term gratification of pleasures like sex, drugs or gambling, though I'm not knocking them, but something that will bring true and lasting happiness the kind that sticks. If you can cultivate the right attitude, your enemies are your best spiritual teachers. Because their presence provides you with the opportunity to enhance and develop tolerance, patience and understanding. Be kind whenever possible. It is always possible. The planet does not need more successful people. The planet desperately needs more peacemakers, healers, restorers, storytellers, and lovers of all kinds. It needs people to live well in their places. 
It needs people with moral courage willing to join the struggle to make the world habitable and humane, and these qualities have little to do with success as our culture is the set. Sometimes one creates a dynamic impression by saying something. And sometimes one creates a significant an impression by remaining silent. Where ignorance is our master, there is no possibility of real peace. The way to change others' minds is with affection and not anger. Remember that sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. An open heart is an open mind. There is a saying in Tibetan, tragedy should be utilized as a source of strength. No matter what sort of difficulties, how painful experience is, if we lose our hope, that's our real disaster. It is very rare or almost impossible that an event can be negative from all points of view. Share your knowledge. It is a way to achieve immortality. Happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from your own actions. Choose to be optimistic. It feels better. A disciplined mind leads to happiness, and an undisciplined mind leads to suffering. Give the ones you love wings to fly, roots to come back, and reasons to stay. The more you are motivated by love, the more fearless and free your action will be. Love is the absence of judgment. Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. We can live without religion and meditation, but we cannot survive without human affection. I have found that the greatest degree of inner tranquility comes from the development of love and compassion. The more we care for the happiness of others, the greater is our own sense of well-being. Cultivating a close, warm-hearted feeling for others automatically puts the mind at ease. It is the ultimate source of success in life. Happiness doesn't always come from a pursuit. Sometimes it comes when we least expect it. For monks and nuns, the practice of celibacy is not just a rule. Our target is to try and reduce negative emotions. Sexual desire and attachment are enjoyable, but act as a basis to anger, hatred and jealousy. I think, basically, the purpose of sex is reproduction. So in order to fulfill that purpose, man to man, women to women cannot fulfill. When we meet real tragedy in life, we can react in two ways either by losing hope and falling into self-destructive habits, or by using the challenge to find our inner strength. When life becomes too complicated and we feel overwhelmed, it's often useful just to stand back and remind ourselves of our overall purpose, our overall goal. When faced with a feeling of stagnation and confusion, it may be helpful to take an hour, an afternoon, or even several days, to simply reflect on what it is that will truly bring us happiness. And then reset our priorities on the basis of that. 
This can put our life back in proper context, allow a fresh perspective, and enable us to see which direction to take.